This was the 1990s. Living during this time period was absolutely amazing, especially if you were a kid, with all the awesome TV shows, movies, music, yeah. toys, and especially video games, it was like living in pop culture paradise. As I got older, and the 1990s began to fade further and further into the past, the nostalgia factor kicked in. Collecting toys, video games, and other pieces of memorabilia from my childhood became a hobby that I'm still very much into. However, I do have a problem. The 90s nostalgia craze has gotten completely out of hand. You see, every dinklepuss and their grandma seems to be riding the nostalgia train. Now, obviously, I'm not the only person who was born in 1985 and grew up with all the awesome stuff from that time period. But I feel like the entire nostalgia craze is being run by posers and gatekeepers. And I will talk about that in a little bit. But first, let's talk about 1990s Nickelodeon. You see, I grew up watching shows like Doug, Pete and Pete, Rocco's Modern Life, Salute Your Shorts, and a whole lot more. And I think it would be awesome to have shirts and different merchandise based off of those shows. However, it seems like every stinking day we only see new merch for shows like Rugrats or Spongebob. But where's the love for Doug, or Clarissa Explains It All, or heck, even ah, real monsters? And with that being the case, holy smoke, good luck ever seeing any kind of merch for something like Hey Dude. <laughs> hey Dude. Hey Dude. Now, I do understand, if they have a choice between making Rugrats merch or Wienerville merch, Obviously, the Rugrats stuff will sell a lot more and a lot faster. And yes, I know, they've made stuff for Rocco's Modern Life, and you can get all sorts of goodies out there on the internet. I just wish that when you go to a big box retail store, you would see more merch from the other shows, instead of the same old stuff over and over. And that's just Nickelodeon, but what about all the other nerdy stuff from that time period? Everyone runs off at the mouth about the same old stuff like Friends and Seinfeld, Super Mario Brothers, and Ninja Turtle toys. But what about the hidden gems like The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. or The Wonder World Aquarium? I remember watching TV and seeing these advertisements all the time, which is what made me want this stuff to begin with. So when people are like, well, I never heard of it, well, I mean, I never heard of that. It's like, knock it off, you big dink. Commercials for this stuff was all over the place. I mean, heck, to this day, I still want that old living in the 90s CD because of that awesome commercial. There's only one thing left to say about living in the 90s. You're unbelievable. But like I said, I never hear anyone or see anyone ever talk about this stuff. But if you bring it up, these poo-poo heads act like it's never even existed. And that's what I was saying when I'm talking about posers and gatekeepers. You see, a while back, I joined some Facebook groups that focus on nerdy stuff. But it was almost as if like these groups were created by kids who were born in 1999 or the early 2000s. Now, if I talk about or make a post about the more obscure stuff that I grew up with, it's like it just offends everyone. They act like I'm some wrinkly old man talking about some really, really old and obscure antique. It's like if you discuss anything other than Rugrats, Spongebob, Mario, or the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, their minds are blown and they cannot fathom what's going on. Now, here's the deal. I'm perfectly fine with people collecting and enjoying things from the 1990s and what have you. But dinkle pusses who were born in 1999 or even in the early 2000s magically think that they're the gatekeepers of what the 1990s was or should be. Now I get that they might have been around some of this older stuff when growing up, you know, like from their older siblings or other family members or what have you. Now, the difference between them and us was, huh, get this, we actually grew up and experienced things from that time period. When we saw a commercial about a new PlayStation game, we could go to the store and actually buy or rent the stupid thing. 
But for some screwbally reason, the younger generation will also talk about rental stores and how cool it was to buy those games brand new, even though they never actually experienced it. They just pretend they did. It's like they want to be us, so stinking rotten bad that they give the impression that they actually grew up during the same time period and experienced the same things that we did. <sighs> now I do want to make something clear. I get it. You can be a huge fan of something that you never actually grew up with when it was brand spanking new. I get it. For example, I am a huge Abbott and Costello fan. You see, when I was a little dude back in the day, my dad used to rent and buy Abbott and Costello movies, and we would watch the smack out of them all the time. But that doesn't mean I'm going around and decorating my house and living like it's the 1940s and pretending that I actually grew up during that time period. Now, once again, I understand that some people enjoy that look and actually want to live that way. That's fine, I don't care. But it becomes an issue when you suddenly think that you're better and know more than the people who actually grew up during that time. Now, of course, you might ask, well, what does it matter? Is it really that big of a deal if they act that way? Hmm? Does it really affect you? Does it? Does it? Does it really affect you? Yes, it does, you nitwitted numbskulls. That was exactly my point when I mentioned gatekeeping. Because of them, the big box retailers and the companies producing the products only seem to listen to them and not the people who actually grew up during that time period. Which is why we only see stuff like Rugrats and Spongebob, but nothing like Clarissa Explains It All, or heck, even toys like the Pooch Patrol. And I know you're going to argue with me and say, well, why don't you go to the more obscure stores or go and buy things online? But the problem is people like me who live off in the boonies in no man's land want to actually see things in person and be able to pop on over to a local Walmart or something instead of going off on some treasure hunt that's like two hours away. Or gamble with something online that's not garbage. And going back to the whole Abbott and Costello thing, just because I enjoy movies from that time period does not mean that I'm walking around with my chest puffed out going, oh yeah, I know absolutely everything from this time period. Look at old man, I know more than you. You know nothing. You know nothing, old man. Mm. I'm not going around and telling people from that generation that I know more than they do. Now another thing I want people to do more of is embrace your uniqueness because it seems like nothing is unique anymore. For example, if I wore a Star Wars shirt, I'd pretty much be just like every other nerd out there. But you bet your hind end that if I wore a Motorama shirt or holy smoke, a Circle of Iron shirt, that would be unique beyond belief. Now, if all you grew up with was Star Wars and a lot of the AAA blockbusters, then that's fine. I have nothing against it. But the fact that people grew up with weird, obscure things and basically ignore it makes life feel very cookie cutter. For example, I got myself an MXPX hoodie, and even though it doesn't happen often, once in a blue moon here in northwest Wisconsin, somebody will actually recognize the thing, and it absolutely blows their minds. Because no one is walking around in stuff like this, let alone Spittlefield merch. And even the heavy metal headbanging stuff that you see is more like Pantera, or Slayer, or Megadeth. But you're not seeing anyone walking around in a crust punk shirt like Extreme Noise Terror. So I think it would be awesome if we started embracing more of the unique and obscure parts of our past. Now before I forget, there is one more thing that really irritates the snot out of me. And that is all the fake nostalgic filters. When people make videos and they want it to look all old and crusty, they slap on some filter to make it look like a VHS tape. But if you actually know what the thing really looked like, you can tell how fake that nonsense is. For example, Chris and I made a video in 80s vision, but we never used any filters. We actually ran our camera into a VCR and recorded the footage on an actual VHS tape. That's why it looks the way it does, because it's actually authentic. 
And when it comes to video games, now they even have those scanline filters for older games to play on HD TVs, which makes no sense to me. When I played an original NES or Sega Genesis game on a real console and on an actual CRT television back in the day, I never saw scan lines or pixels, unless I stuck my face right up next to the thing. So I don't understand why they have all these filters to quote unquote show what it actually looked like when in reality it never looked like that. Yes, I know, not everyone has original hardware or a CRT television or VCR. But yet you're willing to spend thousands of dollars to fake the look and it doesn't even properly look like it. Now even though there's a lot of stuff that really makes me mad, you do have to be careful not to be stupid and act like an elitist. For example, let's say you tell somebody not to copy your nostalgia, but to find their own. So they actually do, and they get nostalgic for stuff like the Xbox 360 or PS3 and shows like iCarly. But now suddenly you're mad because it's not nostalgic to you. And then you tell them, ah, that's all new stupid stuff. That's not nostalgic. That was just from a few years ago. Pish, pish. No, it wasn't. So don't be stupid. For example, some people might be nostalgic for the Rugrats movie, but not the Rugrats TV show. So even though they might be a lot younger, they would still have some nostalgic love for the Rugrats. So don't be a ding-ding and say they're not. It's like what I was talking about with Abbott and Costello and the 1940s. Someone might love the 1940s vibe and look and atmosphere and might have a lot of knowledge about stuff from that time even though they never actually grew up in it. But just because you grew up during that time period does not mean you should go completely out of your way and tell them that they are too young to know anything about that stuff. But at the same time, call people out on their nonsense. It's also like when people who were born in the 2000s collect old NES games. Very rarely will you see somebody from the younger generation who actually grew up with the older games. 90% of them are either doing it because they think it's the cool thing to do or for an investment. But they won't say that. They'll say it's for nostalgia because, you know, obviously they grew up during the same time period that we did. Like seriously, why don't you collect nostalgic stuff from your past instead of mine? But like I said, if they're just trying to enjoy it and not be some sort of gatekeeper, I'm completely fine with it. Alright, well that about does it for me. So like I said, I think nostalgia is awesome, but it would be great to see more of the forgotten goodies instead of your stereotypical cookie cutter junk. And it would be awesome if people were more nostalgic for their own past instead of somebody else's. And it would be great to see more authentic stuff instead of fake hogwashy garbage like the filters. But to play devil's advocate, if that's all you got and you enjoy it, but you're not going out of your way to act like that you're better than everyone else, then I think it's perfectly fine. And with that being said, I think I'm going to take off. So whatever, I'm Janitor Jake, and I will see you guys next time.